<laughs> golfers is the craziest people. But from golfers, you pilots can get a serious lesson. If I ain't too personal. Take this, for instance. The first rule is keep your eye on the ball. How many of you is looking at the ball? You said it. <laughs> Me neither. But in golf, there are certain things you've got to do the same way every time. First, you've got to get the ship trimmed for the zoom down the runway. Tower flaps open, landing gear resting firmly on the ground. The stick is eased well back until a stall occurs. Now full throttle. And the maneuver is completed with a normal loop. For you newcomers' information, maneuver is not what you put on your victory garden to make your vegetables grow. Then comes the approach. The one that works best for me is, ahem, <clears throat> hiya, toots. Uh, no, pardon me, <laughs> it's a different game. I mean, to reach your objective successfully, and I know you alert pilots in the audience is now ready for tomorrow, you've got to follow an established procedure. Make the right way the only way. An established procedure is what a good golfer does as his second nature. What the professor was trying to say is that in flying the P-47, there's an established procedure to follow from the moment you approach the airplane until you turn it over to the crew chief at the end of the flight. It's a procedure which you'll learn so well that it'll become part of your second nature, simple and natural, a habit. Well, how's she taking, Joe? There you go, sir. That's good. The lieutenant's taking his first hop in the 47 today. Good. You're getting ready to go up in the 47. And as a part of your regular procedure, you make an exterior check of the airplane, reporting anything that doesn't look just right to your crew chief, who's your team partner. It's running swell. It's all right with me. Lieutenant, clockwise check. Gas selector on main. Trim tabs in takeoff position. Flaps up. Landing gear down and locked. Oil and intercooler shutters checked for open. Turbo closed. Track your throttle a half to three quarters of an inch. Prop lever pull forward. Mixture control and idle cutoff. Generator switch on. Prop control switch in automatic. Mags off. Battery off. Cage your flight instruments. Cowl flaps open. Radio off. Tail wheel unlocked. When you've made your clockwise check, you've covered your checklist. But you want to look at your list whenever you're in doubt, also to check your limits. Clear? Clear. Mags on both. Battery on. All right, primer. Two strokes is enough in this heat. About 15 seconds on your energizer. Hold it till she whines.
800. Anywhere between 800 and 1,000. Check your oil pressure and temperature. Army 8283 to Pine Couple Power. Standing by at Hangar 3 for taxi instructions. All up. Pine Castle Tower to Army 8283. OK to taxi. South on number four. Over. Remember, you're going up between eight and ten thousand. Steep and shallow turns. Power on stalls and power off. Pull your flaps up and watch how you settle. We're going up to see how this airplane reacts. Well, let's take this a good one, Lieutenant. Here you go for number one. You're essing all the time you're on the ground. Keep your head up so you can see what's going on around you. You'll come to know that the position of your wheels is just under your inboard gun. Good thing to know if you're ever running close to the edge. You're taking it easy on the brakes. You're playing with them, not tramping on them. With mags and flap equalizer checked, we're ready to call the tower. Army 8283 to Pine Castle Tower. Ready for takeoff. Over. Pine Castle Tower to Army 8283. Okay to take off on number four. Over. Like a kid crossing the street, you look up and down that runway. Tail wheel forward to lock. Clear your engine. Here we go for a good one. Throttle forward with a steady positive motion. You're flying your 47 down the runway. You're not taking for granted that you're going to stay in the groove just because the tail wheel's locked. Keep to the center. Let's go back and see your takeoff again. You're helping the airplane just a little bit. Feel your way to airborne. Now you're getting your wheels up. You're making a good takeoff. Let's see it over again. This pilot is going to be telling the boys about this experience. 47's wide landing gear gives this ship excellent ground looping characteristics that can be your friend in need if your engine should ever fail on the takeoff. Before this pilot looped, he slowed her down as much as possible and unlocked the tail wheel. He gave hard left rudder and left brake to pivot.
As for you, you're out of the pattern now and established in your flying. Now you're leveling off at the altitude you want and setting your throttle and RPM for your desired cruising speed, which at this stage of your training will be about 32 inches manifold pressure and 2,250 RPM. Switch from main to auxiliary. You want to keep those instruments in the green. Check your checklist on your operating limits. Trim your plane. Trim tabs on the 47 are sensitive. You can trim your ship quickly and easily with a small adjustment. a definite schedule on this flight, so let's get in those shallow and steep banks and get the feel of the 47. Some low and high speed turns, and check on your turning radius. Practicing your stalls, notice the amount of altitude you need for recovery. You won't be in any doubt about when the P-47's gonna stall. It'll let you know. Buffeting and sloppiness of controls are your stall signals. This airplane will drop straight. It has no tendency to spin. Nose down to pick up speed. Let's have another one, with wheels and flaps down. Up with the nose, slowly. There she goes. Better check the stalling speed on your own individual airplane. Time to head for the barn. With your shoulder harness locked, you're making a clockwise check of the cockpit before landing. Gas selector, turn to your tank containing the most fuel. Aileron and rudder and landing trim. Oil shutters and intercooler shutters in neutral. Propeller RPM at 2,550. Mixture control at auto rich. Army 8283 to find Castle Power. Standing by for landing instructions. Auto. Find Castle Tower to Army 8283. OK for landing. You're number one on number four. Wheels down and locked. Over. Wheels down and locked. Roger. Canopy open. 
cowl flaps closed. Check your flap equalizer. You want the rod to stick out 3 eighths of an inch. At 1,000 feet, you're coming in on the base leg. At the turn, you're 6 to 800 feet. 150 indicated airspeed. Coming out of the turn, you're at 500 feet. Flaps pull down. You set your 47 down on the first quarter of the runway. Here's how you look while you're doing it. Flaps coming down. Back on the throttle. You're establishing your glide about 120. Lined up with the runway. You're coming in for a normal three-point landing. Smooth as silk. In the P-47, you don't lower your landing gear with your speed above 200. Landing gear should fail to come down, get out of local traffic and find out what's wrong. To lower a stubborn landing gear, yaw the airplane. This should bring you in with wheels pulled down and locked. When you're making your turn for a landing, your speed is 150, coming out about 140. Never lower your flaps if your speed is above 190. If the flaps don't come down and there's no pressure indicated on the gauge, put the flap handle down and operate the hand pump. Be sure the landing gear handle is in neutral when you operate the pump. This pilot has come in too high and hot. If you should ever find yourself in this position, with too much speed or height to land in the first quarter of the runway, pour on the coal and boot it out of there. Give it full power, but don't pull up too steeply. When you're above 500 feet, milk your flaps up. When you get some altitude, go around and shoot another landing. You're making this a good one, but remember that a landing hasn't been completed until you stop rolling. You're not riding your brakes. A little brake. Let them cool off. A little more break. You're getting down to taxiing speed before you unlock your tail wheel. Get it unlocked before you start to turn. constantly to keep from chewing up somebody's tail. Cowl flaps open. Wing flaps retracted so they don't get nicked by flying stones.
you come into line, you want to leave your airplane the way you'd like to find it for an emergency takeoff. Parking brakes set until the chocks are under the wheels. Radio off. Clear the engine, 1,000 RPM, and then mixture control to idle cutoff. When the propeller stops rotating, cut the mags. Battery off. Fuel selector off. Rudder and aileron trim tabs to neutral. Flaps down. Generator switch off. Flight controls locked. You made it a good one, all right. You knew what you were doing all the time, and you didn't take anything for granted. You took all the necessary safety precautions for ground personnel, yourself, and the airplane. You kept your head up out of the cockpit, on the ground and in the air. You S the airplane all the time on the ground. You used the throttle smoothly on takeoff. You got off the ground nicely. Felt pretty good, too. You glanced frequently at your instruments to see the temperatures remained in the green. You used your time in the air to feel out the P-47, to discover stalling speeds and turning radius. And when you came in, you made a proper turn and approach. That's a nice job of flying. The kind of flying that helps any pilot through transition and into combat.